Thank you. Our first order of business tonight is the presentation of the Ralph Gould Award, and I'm happy to have Councillor Jessica Sullivan give the presentation to this year's recipient. Thank you. Thank you, um, Chairman McCausland. Before proceeding with the presentation of the Ralph Gould Award to Norman Jordan, I'd like to recognize Norm's family and friends who are here tonight. His son Greg is here, if you'd please stand for everyone. And there are friends, there are members of the Cape Elizabeth Historical Preservation Society here. Would you please stand so the council can recognize you? And any other friends that are here that I'm, for the senior citizens perhaps, advisory commission? Okay, all right, thank you. The Ralph Gould Award was established in 1986 and was named for the late Ralph Gould to recognize his community service and subsequently to recognize those who provide community service in the same spirit as Ralph Gould. Norman is the 27th Cape Elizabeth citizen to receive this award since its inception, and he joins a distinguished and diverse group. Norman is a lifelong resident of Cape Elizabeth. He graduated from Cape Elizabeth High School in 1953 and served in the United States Army in the later 1950s before returning home to Cape Elizabeth. When his father died in 1985, Norman moved from Shore Road back to the farm where he grew up at the corner of Ocean House and Fowler Road. Norm has been an active volunteer citizen. He served on the first library planning committee from 2006 to 2008. He campaigned to keep Fort Williams free when the town was considering uh, parking fees. And he served most recently on the Senior Citizens Advisory Commission and on Cape Elizabeth's 250th Anniversary Committee. Norm is a descendant of Cape Elizabeth's original settler, the Reverend Robert Jordan, and he has been heavily involved with the Jordan family's national organization and has been their contact in Cape Elizabeth. Norman has been a member of the Cape Elizabeth Historical Preservation Society for many years, and he is a past president. He's been managing the sizable Jordan collection for almost 10 years. He is well known for generously availing himself to many people wanting to learn more about the history of Cape Elizabeth or, for example, the history of the old farmhouse they just bought. Norm's farm is a long-standing agriculture business and still operates in the manner of the best of Cape Elizabeth's old-time traditions. His farm stand sells flowers and raspberries by the honor system. He's recently added Christmas trees and sold some this year also by the honor system. He told me that a gentleman came by in a rush right before Christmas to buy a tree but had forgotten his wallet. Norm told him to drop off the payment when he could no payment came, and Norman thought, oh well, I guess that's that. However, a check did arrive in the mail from out of state on January 26. <laughs> His farm is locally famous for flowers and has been for several generations. It's not uncommon for someone now living away to stop by and tell Norman that they used to pick flowers at his farm when they were growing up. Norman's flower gardens have touched people's lives in ways that most of us are unaware of. Last summer, a rather poignant event occurred relating to Norman's flower gardens. A gentleman in his 60s stopped by to select two large bouquets of flowers. <clears throat> Norman later found out that the man's mother had recently died, and she herself had picked flowers on Norm's farm for many years. When she could no longer drive, her family would bring her to Norm's and help her pick flowers. The family burned the two bouquets of flowers, mixed those ashes along with their mother's ashes, and scattered them all together. Norman, ever the historian, is a well-traveled farmer and has been to many faraway places such as Morocco, which he told me when I was chatting with him was the first country in the world to recognize the United States as an independent nation and that we establish our first foreign embassy there. Norman's love and knowledge of Cape Elizabeth's history are legendary 
He has been a valuable resource to many Cape citizens, those of us who have lived here for years and those who have just arrived. Members of both the Cape Elizabeth Historical Preservation Society and the 250th Anniversary Committee and the Senior Citizens Advisory Commission have shared that Norm's stories of Cape's history always bring tremendous perspective and fun to the business at hand. Over the years, Norm has served Cape Elizabeth citizens in many ways, such as local farmer, historian, activist, and archivist, and always with a touch of humor and warmth. On behalf of the town of, excuse me, on behalf of the Cape Elizabeth Town Council, I'm delighted to present the 2016 Ralph Gould Award to a beloved local legend, Norman Jordan. Please join us in congratulations. Excuse me, I've asked Norm if he would say a few words. I don't usually say a few words. I usually <laughs> drag it out for half an hour or so. Um, and I've got two cousins on the council there, and I think if I did a little digging, I could find a third. Um, yes, this family thing is an addiction. <laughs> A lot of the times I'll be, had something I should be doing, but I was on the computer looking for somebody that got married in Nebraska, 1822 or something. Um, yeah, that story about the, the um, ashes, um, yes, that day my ex-wife was there uh, and uh, my youngest grandchild, my little girl, so she was probably eight at the time, um, they took her down to the kettle cold. And Al Fick came back and told me about it, that she said uh, there were a group of people there obviously splitting ashes. And one of the men said, oh, she got in my eyes. <laughs> and then a week later, two weeks later, I went out there one day, there was a man out there just kind of walking around, maybe picking some flowers. And he said, my mother used to come here all the time, and we'd pick them the same story. It was the same people that my ex-wife saw for the ashes. I thought it was nice. Yes. Um, a lot about Cape Elizabeth. When I was in school, that was a stage. A pretty good stage, too. It had uh, the curtains and the drop curtains and everything. <laughs> Uh, I can't remember the name of the play. Come think about it, I had to look that up. In the senior high school, I was a senior in high school. We senior class. I always put a play on here. Uh, I was stage manager. <laughs> I don't know how much well I did. Uh, my flower garden is, you know, some of you ladies and men even uh, pick flowers there. Um, I just sent in the orders for seeds a couple of days ago. Um, and I get a lot of people talk, uh, tell things. I had one lady, obviously Spanish, uh, the lady said she's picking flowers, she's the first time she's ever picked. So I went out and talked to her. And I said, first time you ever picked flowers? She said, yes. I said, well, that's, you know, that's nice. You have a good, she's enjoying it very much. And very nice here, perfect English. She must be an English teacher at some voice. Um, and I said, well, she said that the first time you ever picked. Yes, yes. And I said, well, where, where are you from? And she said, Bolivia. And I said, well, they raise a lot of flowers in South America. And uh, she said, not where I live, uh, enough of the rocks and ice. It was up in the high Andes. Um, another lady once kind of grinned at me and said, you're doing this all wrong. 
And I said, uh, yeah? She says, well, yes, you should be giving us these flowers free. Charge. He says, and charge us $50 an hour for the therapy. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then one more. Um, lady this summer told me, she says, well, we, my husband got transferred here to Southern Maine last year. And we came and rented a house because uh, we wanted to be sure we, what we bought was what we wanted. And we made a pact, and he looked for houses, and I looked for houses that we knew both would like. And in you know, two or three, three or four weeks or sometime. But she said, I had the last choice. Uh, it was up to me which one we did, no matter what. So she said, we, we went and looked at these two, two places, one in the Cape and one in Falmouth. And um, she went back to her husband, and she says, no, go take the one in Cape Elizabeth, because that's where the flower garden is. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know. Yeah, my family, I never, I was in the fourth grade, which was right corner window right over there. And the, the, the bank in the, right there, but there was nothing but gra bank of gravel. There was no sidewalk, no steps, no nothing. Um, and we were out there playing marbles. It was just, it was evidently not too, I don't know what the date would have been. You'd find out. Does it, <laughs> somebody opened the window, leaned out, and said, Germany surrendered. <laughs> um, I don't know what the wind did Germany, what, it must have been warm enough so we were playing marbles. Uh, a few other, Miss Story at the upstairs windows, up, upstairs, the big room. Uh, she couldn't have weighed 98 pounds, ringing wet. And I'll tell you, some of these guys were scared to death of her. Because um, she would, you know, this was 1946, 45, 47, 48. She would, I see, I see the stone wall cellar down here where the men's room, boys' room was. She had this kid, and she grabbed him by the scalp of the neck and banged him up against that wall hard enough so he fell on the ground when he, she let go of him. Um, and you didn't go home and tell your father, the parents, that she hit you because he'd had it 25 years before. <laughs> and, he, and she taught another 25 years after, I think after I went through with her. Um, Manioki Alexander came ashore. Went to school. Pretty, it was it was all right then, nine, nine o'clock. But the wind was still blowing hard. Um, she thought we ought to see that, and she got the bus driver and loaded us in the bus and took us down. And no 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 uh, authority, just her doing. The bus driver, and we saw him. Um, I remember years later. Late enough, so I was working at Jonesy's. I saw, and of course in those days there wasn't much between the high school of the old 1930 building and here. Um, I saw several people, uh, young people, um, graduates, come up through there. I knew some of them. They'd come up through there. They were coming here to uh, say goodbye to Miss Story, because she taught them something. She had a sister that taught in Scarborough, and they traveled every summer. One man said, he said, my wife and I were sitting at a restaurant in Italy someplace, and we looked over there and Miss Story and her sister sitting at the next table to us. Yeah. And yeah, the Jordan family was very deep. We have... Uh, Probably rolling up in the gut, and Lewiston probably has got um, 40, 40, 40 odd thousand descendants from that one couple who got married on Richmond's Island in 1643. Um, not all with John name, of course, but we changed them. And they traveled all over the world. Those little tiny ships, some of them. I had one, and Women were, the sailors didn't like females aboard ships, but the captain's wife could go. And if the captain's wife had children, the first mate's wife could go to help take care of the children. Somebody said, well, maybe she was a school teacher. <laughs> and 
one of, one of distant cousins, had three children. One bought Dockside, Calcutta, India. Another bought South Pacific, at sea, South Pacific. The third bought Dockside, London, England. <laughs> they were like, really got around. <laughs> and I'm not gonna tell the story, but 1860, a family chartered a clipper ship out of New York to go to Hong Kong. And I thought that the captain was married to a Jordan girl. Uh, turned out to be wrong. Unusual name, too. They had a, a big birthday celebration in the middle of the Indian Ocean. So the girl was, one of the girls was 12, about 20 something people in the family was aboard the ship. Um, The little girl was 12. And the cap sea captain's birthday was the same day. The man, he owned the boat and the captain. Uh, he was, she was 12 and he was uh, maybe 32. And I knew immediately mine was wrong because my man would have been in the 60s. And that girl um, had a birthday in the middle of the Indian Ocean in um, 1860. It was Franklin Delano Roosevelt's mother. Wow. That's why there's so much about it on the internet. I think probably that's a uh, hello. <clears throat> I could go for a long time. Thank you. Uh, when they when they came over to see me, she came over to see me. I did. And I, she, she told me that I said, what? Who? Me? <laughs> why? <laughs> Good. Thank you. Before you leave, can we get a picture for just a minute? Can you <laughs> sure. Sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sure. Let me keep my no. yeah. I didn't make a face. I <laughs> want to do one without the glasses. I'll check it. Want, want to do one without the glasses? You can do one. I was. Some, some of us. Some of us adults were in the kitchen talking, and the children who were in the 20s and 30s were in the living room watching old slides. And somebody says, Look at this one. I knew who they were talking about. <laughs> <laughs>